All right, let's examine problem 13, 1a. This problem has us looking at payback period and net present value. So it says, Gray Animations is considering replacing its current network of computers with newer, faster, more efficient models. It purchased its current computers three years ago for 100,000 bucks. And at that time, the company expected the computers to last for five years with a residual value of $10,000. They're giving us lots of interesting information here. Maybe we could compute like a, an amortization rate or something like that. But this stuff is not going to be too relevant to our decision uh, to replace these computers, right? Uh, these are sunk costs. They're not relevant costs for this decision. Uh, but let's read on. If the computers were sold today, they would fetch $35,000. Okay, so that is a relevant piece of information, right? You could sell the computers for 35 grand. So if we were to sell them, we make 35 grand. Uh, new computers could be purchased today for $150,000 and would have an expected life of five years. Over that five year life, the computers would uh, reduce operating expenses by an estimated $40,000 per year for the first three years and by $20,000 per year in the last two years. The estimated residual value of the new computers is $12,000. The project's cost of capital is 12%. So I guess our boring rate here is 12%. It says calculate the project's cash payback period. So here we don't really worry about uh, present value uh, calculations. We don't worry about time value of money. So for this one, that 12% is gonna be uh, uh, irrelevant. So no need to worry about the discount rate. This one though is all about discounting those future cash flows and figuring out uh, what the present value is. So let's uh, examine, and actually this will serve both parts of the question. I kind of want to just do it like a cash flow timeline here. So on, uh, well today, the, the, the day of the, the sort of time zero, uh, I'll say year zero. Uh, what happens in year zero? Well, let's see, we're going to buy some new computers. That's the, the whole reason for this. We're outlaying 150K. Uh, also in year zero though, we are selling, if we if we do make this decision, we're, we're recouping 35K. It's almost like a trade-in, right? You're, trading in your old stuff, you're getting some value for it, and you're purchasing new stuff. Uh, anything else happening on day one? Doesn't look like it. No, not, nothing else in, in day one, year zero, however you want to put it. Uh, so we're just outlaying $115,000. That's our initial investment here to get these computers going. Now, the reason we're buying the new computers, maybe it's faster workflow, it's saving our employees time. Maybe they're more efficient computers, saving us power costs. Whatever the reason, we believe that these computers are going to generate a savings to us. As I mentioned at the end of the last video, this is all estimates, right? Even when it's given to you in a question, somebody's had to estimate this. And so if you're looking at making these types of decisions, you really wanna scrutinize the estimates. Why is this gonna reduce operating expenses by 40 grand a year? Like break it down for me, right? I would wanna know that uh, before I trusted any of the calculations coming out of it, I would wanna trust the numbers going into the calculations, right? That's the key to the whole thing. Uh, okay, so anyway, year one, we're plus 40 grand because we're saving $40,000. If we do this, let's see, over the five year life, so the first three years, so year two plus 40 grand, year three plus 40 grand, year four, not so great. Year four, we're saving 20 grand, so plus 20. Year five plus 20. And uh, it says the estimated residual value of the new computers is $12,000. That means after we're done with them, how much do you think they'll be worth? They'll be worth 12 grand. That means we can salvage them for 12 grand. We can sell them to somebody or sell the parts, maybe sell the RAM or the CPUs or some portion of the computer, maybe just the cases. Uh, but we're gonna be able to recoup 12 grand. And so in the last year, it's plus. 32,000. So payback period is actually pretty simple. You just look at this number line and go, okay, 
when does this negative investment, and it's always going to be a negative investment, right? These investment decisions are like, should we spend our money on this? So it's always some spend at the start. So is this negative 115K outlay, is it going to be worth it? And payback period says, when's it going to be paid off? So you just have to look at when does it go positive, right? So plus 40 there, that's not positive. Plus 40 there, that's not positive. Plus 40 there. Ah, there it's going to go positive because 40 and 40 is 80 and 40 is 120. Well, 120, by the end of year three, we've covered this. Now, the math here would be pretty simple. You just go, okay, 115K, my investment, divided by my annual receipts. Now, luckily, um, it was all the same, so I can just divide by 40, but otherwise you would have to kind of just go through year by year and say, okay, we're not positive yet, we're not positive yet, we're not positive, or we are positive in year three. But here, since they're all the same, I can just say, okay, 115 divided by 40. Call up my old uh, calculator here. Oh my goodness. 115 divided by 40 is 2.875. So in under three years, and you got to remember, this is back of the napkin math we're doing, right? I mean, the, the calculation makes it sound so official. Oh, it'll happen in 2.875 years. Well, that's if we save exactly $40,000 each year, which we know it'll be higher or lower in reality. This is just estimates. So I would, if I crunched this number, if I was talking about this to a real person, I would say, it looks like we're going to have uh, this project paid for in under three years, right? That's what I would say. You know, if we buy the new computers, they're going to pay for themselves in three years. That's what we're learning here. Again, if I were doing this on a test, I would present my professor with 2.875 because that's the number I got. In real life, I'd be saying, again, we're talking in, in fuzzy numbers here. So I would say, oh, it looks like under three years. Okay, so that's the payback period. 2.875 years. Um, a is in the bag, and that's really A down there. Uh, B, the net present value. Well, that's where this little table or drawing I did is going to come in handy. Maybe I can lasso this and move it down. Let's see. This I use OneNote. It has this thing called a lasso. Look at that. It did it. I always screw it up, but I didn't screw it up that time. Hey, hey, all right. I just wanted to move it down. Okay, so what does net present value say? It says, look, the fact that I'm saving, say, 32 grand five years from now, right? The fact that I have this $32,000 um, positive cash expectation in year five, that's not worth $32,000 today. I need to discount it and state it in today's dollars. Put differently. My cost to borrow money is 12000 or 12%, not $12,000, 12%. So if I'm going to borrow money and I got to borrow one hundred and fifteen grand, I better have an investment that produces uh, at a greater rate than what I'm borrowing at. In other words, if I'm borrowing and it's costing me 12% to borrow the money to fund this project, my project better return more than 12%, or right? it's a money losing proposition, right? I'm, I'm gonna make, let's say I make 10% and then the project costs 12% you know, uh, to fund, I'm losing money every year on the interest. So what discounted cash flow says is, you gotta factor in the interest. That's all it's saying. Now, again, if you're using Excel or a financial calculator, you'd be taking the present value of an annuity, I'm going to do this the slowest way humanly possible. There's present value tables. There's present value of an annuity formulas. I'm just simply going to uh, present value each one of these years. So I'm going to say, okay, what is $40,000 after year one? What is that if I restate it into year zero terms? What's this one, this one, this one? And I'm going to even draw that arrow. Yes, that one. What are those all stated in terms of year zero dollars? So the math is pretty simple to do a present value. And, and you wouldn't want to do this for 10 or 20 years, but you could in Excel pretty easily, or, or even if you're doing it by hand, if you have lots of time. So let's do our discounted cash flows. Of course, year zero, we don't need to discount at all. It's just 115K negative. Year one. 
I just take 40 grand, I divide by one plus the interest rate, so it's 12%, so 1.12 raised to the power of one, because it's one year deep. Year two, it's 40 grand divided by 1.12 raised to the power of two. Year three, oops, pardon me, 40 grand divided by 1.12 raised to the power of three. Year four, 40 grand divided by 1.12. Oh, sorry, year four is 20 grand raised to the power of four. And year five is 32 grand. Divide by 1.12 to the fifth power. And these are all positive cash flows. Our first one was a negative cash flow. So that's it. And then we're just going to add them all up and see if this is positive or negative. So uh, let's see. 40 grand divided by 1.12 raised to the power of 1. And so just divided by 1.12. And that's 35, 7, 14. Forty grand divided by one point one two raised to the power of two. That's thirty one eight eighty eight. And again, this just goes to further the point, right? Forty thousand dollars two years from now is not the same as forty thousand dollars today. In fact, forty thousand dollars two years from now, at the discount rate we have at the. Uh, rate of borrowing or the, the cost of borrowing we have is only $31,888 today. So in other words, earning that money, it's going to cost me money to earn it because I've got to borrow to invest. Uh, and so again, it, it's $40,000 two years from now is not worth the same as $40,000 today. Okay, let's do the third one. Where are we here? $40,000 divided by 1.12 raised to the power of 3, 28,471. $20,000 divided by 1.12 raised to the power of 4, 12,710. And $32,000 divided by 1.12 to the power of 5. And it's 18,158. Okay, so and don't forget, we have this negative $115,000. Maybe I'll even just erase that. I just want it to be in a row here. Uh, and I've got to put add back the uh, the positive future cash flow. So let's clear everything. Negative one one five oh oh oh. So I got negative one fifteen plus thirty five seven fourteen plus thirty one eight 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 plus twenty eight four seven one plus 12, 7, 10, plus 18, 158. So after all of that, I get a net present value of 11, 941. That is my net present value. Because it's a positive net present value, I'd certainly consider taking on this project, although I would want to compare it to other possible projects, right? I would compare their net present values. I would also compare some non-financial things like, look, do I have the expertise? What's the level of risk that I'm not going to be able to execute? Or maybe that these computers are going to be duds and they're going to break after three years. You know, what, what are my risks here? And I would want to factor that into my decision. It's not a pure numbers decision, but this is the pure number side of it. So again, net present value is all about just discounting those future cash flows to figure out whether a decision should be made or which decision should be made. So I hope this video has been helpful for you in solving problem 13.1a. Bye for now.